Welcome everyone after the coffee break. So now you should be even more awake because of all the, the caffeine. Uh, so our next speaker is uh, Professor Deeman Jinnath. And uh, he tells me that he's an old timer here, he's a veteran. So he has the shortest bio of all the people. And if you still want to learn more about him, I suggest you meet him after the talk. <laughs> so uh, Professor Manjunath has been with the Electrical Engineering Department of IIT Bombay since 1998. He's currently the professor in charge of uh, CMINDS, the Center. C -Mines. C -Mines. Yes. Thank you for that. <laughs> the Center for Machine Intelligence and Data Science at IIT Bombay. So, uh, big applause for Dr. Manjuna. Yeah, I'm a regular for the old timers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The other thing is, since you have been chemically stressed by the coffee, so I guess I don't have to make you stand up and all that. Anyway, so what I'm going to do is talk about influencing budgets. Uh, the motivation for this, I believe, is more interesting than the actual final model. There's no the strong sophistication to the model. Very simple. And it's a, it's a stylized model, which I believe is useful to understand a particular, particular thing that I believe is not been modeled in general. So I call it influencing language, and you'll see why. Uh, so this will give you a, a motivation. So consider an art placement system. You could consider any of the other motivations from a So I, I use this because it's a bit more uh, illustrative of what I want to say. Now it has to display k out of n apps. It has n possible apps, and it wants to display, let's say, k of these. And for convenience, just assume that it's k is one. Okay. Now. From the point of view of the ad placement system, the value of that ad is equal to the click through rate. That means if the probability of you clicking on that ad is high, then the, the value that I get is also high. That is sort of one motivation to look at ads. But the other motivation could also be, or, uh, other motivation for the system to decide what ad to place could be that different ads carry different revenues. Okay. For example, an IT ad might fetch more than a Vikings ad. I don't know if they should be, but it could be. Okay, so if, if these are the two choices, there's a click through rate and the revenue from the ad, the two separate separate uh, features or separate aspects of the particular ad will determine what ads to place. Now, because of this ad additional incentive of the ad, the ad revenue being different, it is possible that the ad placement system will put in ads which have a low click through rate. Low click through rate essentially means that the person is not interested in that particular ad. Now, if you just look at how you behave when you see these ads or when you see the recommendations on YouTube or any of those, any of the recommendations that you see on the various platforms that you use, it is not unreasonable to assume that the click through probability, when you see an ad, the click through probability depends on the history of the ads that you have seen. Hey, uh, so some can be annoyed by seeing, you no, know, I mean, if you keep seeing the same ad, you can get irritated and say, I'm not going to touch this for the game. Okay. Or if you have shown something frequently, you might just get your interest might interest might kindle and say, okay, maybe I'll try what this what this thing is about. So the probability of an ad being clicked on can depend on how often something has been shown. Essentially, all I'm trying to say is that there's a history that determines what we do. Okay, but the revenue can be constant. Okay, can, revenue can be fixed for that particular thing. Now, if the APS, the, the ad placement system, is learning the interests of the user, and hence the value of the ad, the value here depends on both of these, okay, and hence the value of a particular ad, then the learning of one will try to explore. It will show you things that it, it is not very sure whether you like or not. And when it is showing you these things, it is possible that those exploration ads that it tried on you could also be influencing your interests. It's not unreasonable to believe this. Now, if you believe that, if you are reasonable 
if you're as reasonable as I am, and you believe that this is true, okay, so then I want to understand what happens in this case. Okay, I want to construct a model where there is an interaction between the learning algorithm and the interest profile of that user. That's typically not what is considered in most of the models that I'm familiar with. Okay, so the general interest in some of the work that I've done in this past is to capture the effect of the history of the ads place on the preferences. Okay, so I'll make some remarks on this later. Okay, <clears throat> for now, assume an extreme case. Okay, I, for the purpose of the rest of this talk, or most of the rest of this talk, we'll assume the extreme case where the ad placement system actually wants to shape your preferences. Okay, we want to have a model for that and see how it can shape your preferences. Through the ads that it places. Okay, I mean, this is this is typically the stuff of political campaigns or any other ad campaigns or any other campaigns. So it's not unreasonable that I'm making this assumption on the system. Or unreasonable that I'm picking up on that motivation. Okay, so or in the case of a recommendation system, the items that it becomes, the ad, the ad placement system or this, or the way I want to look at this, another way that you can look at what I'm trying to do here. Is something that is called opinion shaping. For those of you who are familiar with opinion dynamics, what I'm giving you is an example of opinion okay. <clears throat> or opinion control. Okay. Any questions on the motivation? So if that's if you agree with what I just said here, I'll dive quickly into the motivation, sorry, into the into the, into the model that I'm going to consider as part of this. So we'll assume there are two types of users, okay, simplest that we could handle. Okay, and take the two types of users in the population which are distinguished by preferences. Okay, uh, yeah, so we'll assume that there's a recommendation system on an APS, which we call S, which serves this population which has two types of people. Okay, and we'll assume that the system also has exactly two arms. So S recommends one of the two arms to each arriving user. Uh, users arrive in sequence to this system, and there's a recommendation that the system S provides to them. Okay, and it recommends one of the two. There are only two arms available in the system. Time is discrete, and at time t, so this is a bit of a notation. At time, time t, there's a user whose type is x. Okay, so x takes values in one and two, which it arrives, and there is a system s that is the recommendation system which observes the type. It knows what is the type of the user and shows one of the two arms a. Okay, there are a1 or a2, I could also call this 1 and 2. I just want to distinguish between them. That's why I'm calling that a1. Okay. So at any given time, the fraction of type 1 and type 2 users is tracked by an order. So this is something that you're familiar with your elementary probability theory courses. There's usually an R, and there are balls in this R. There are balls of different colors, and you have a whole lot of global problems based on that. Okay. So let's just bring back that R here, and we'll assume that there are two colors balls of two colors in this color. Okay, so color one corresponds to population. Color one in some sense represents population of type one, and color two represents population of type one. Okay, so there is no, it is not number. The number of balls in the earth doesn't correspond to the number of people. It's only tracking a certain fraction of the population. So it's some kind of virtual device for me to understand how the population behavior is changing. Okay. <clears throat> Now, yeah, so we we'll assume that the way in which I'm mapping the URL, the content of the URL to the population type is that the fraction of type 1 users in the population equals the fraction of type 1 balls in the URL. Okay, so this is just a virtual device. This, is, this does not represent people. The number of balls doesn't represent people. There's no numerical correlation, only the fractional population. Okay, or a fractional relation between the two. Any questions on that? Okay. Type of uh, users to uh, between the two systems, that help uh, simplify the problem. You mean I have only two types of users? Yes. Yes. I mean, it's also pedagogically more convenient. You know, stating the results becomes simpler and so on. One could generalize, but the generalization has several varieties. So, I, you know, every generalization that I can do can be questioned. Here it's a little easier to sort of motivate it in, in this case. Yeah. So as I said earlier, it's more a stylized model to understand a certain phenomena that I believe should be understood better. Okay. okay. So the reward structure is this. Okay, suppose the arriving user is of type one. Remember that it can be type one or two. I can take values one or two. And the recommended arm is J. 
which is AT. Now, and when S, when, when S recommends to user that arrive here, at the user of time i that are time i that arrive at time t, the rj, then there's a reward at that time that we call W. It's a Bernoulli. Okay, and the mean of this Bernoulli reward is Bij. Mind you that the reward depends on the type of the user and the answer. Okay, so the expectation of that reward depends on this. So Bij is the expected reward if user i is shown Rj. Okay, and we, and this B, I collect all the Bij's in the matrix that I call capital B, and that is what we call the rewards mean. The reward means matrix. Okay. And without also generality, I'll assume that the diagonal ones are the maximum value. You know. Essentially, what I'm saying is that type I prefers arm of type I. Population of person of type I, user of type I prefers an arm of type I. Okay? So which means that B11 is higher than B12, B22 is higher than B21. Okay. And here is how the content of the urn, which is lacking the user profile, the interest profile of the users, changes. Okay? So we'll assume ZIP is the number of balls of type I in that urn. Okay, so you should remember that we still have that urn. And the number of R balls in that urn is, I'll, I'll give you two separate models and come back to that. Okay, so ZIT is the number of balls of type I. Okay, Z1 plus Z2 is the total number of balls in that urn. And we begin with Z1 of 0 and Z2 of 0 in that urn. So now that can, I mean, you know, that's a sort of problem dependent. You can start with some, some, some non zero values for problems or non one values or what. Okay, so now how do I track this? What I'm assuming is that the user that arrives at time t is, is the probability that user, user that arrives at time t is of type i depends on the fraction of balls of type i in that part. Okay, z i divided by the sum of the z i is z1 plus z. So I have only two z1 divided by z1 plus z2 or z2 divided by z1 plus z2. Now, what happens to the uh, now depends on the type of customer who came in and the reward that that person got, which in turn depends on the arm that was Okay? So I can define two evolution models, or rather I define two evolution models. Okay. One is what I call the decreasing influence model, or de decreasing influence dynamics model, okay, where the, pa the population becomes less plastic with time. Okay, so in the beginning, everybody is sort of trying to find out where to go. They come with some relations. Everybody is trying to decide where to go. And after a certain amount of time, people become more rigid in their lives. Okay, the ability of the system to influence the population decreases with time. That's sort of one motivation for this model. Okay, so how do I do this? I think I assume that every time that a user comes and a recommendation is made, the total number of balls in that curve increases by one. Okay, and the way I add balls is this. If WT is equal to one, okay, then I add ball of type 80 to the earth. Whatever was shown to me, okay, I believe that what I'm essentially saying is that that is some kind of I like it. The type of, the type corresponding to that ball keeps changing in the earth, okay. If you if if you are if you are uh, if, if if you are shown a PC ad and you are sorry if you like PCs if, and if you are shown a Mac ad irrespective of whether you like Mac or if you like PC the number of balls corresponding to Mac in the other which is, is increased by one. On the other hand, if I didn't like what I showed, what was shown to me, okay, then the ball of the other type is added to the other. You were shown a Mac ad, you didn't like the Mac. So a ball corresponding to PC will be added on it. Okay, onto the earth. Okay, so that depends on whether I liked it or not. Okay, so I can sort of capture it in this map. <clears throat> capture that description in that map. Okay. WT is the reward that you get, the Bernoulli reward. Yeah. WT is not evolved. WT is not evolved. WT depends on depends on XT, the type of the candidate or the user that arrived, and the arm that was shown. 
So, but you said in the beginning that somehow your, your choices get influenced by what is shown to you. Right. So, so My, the population type keeps changing at, depending on what is shown to me. Sorry, I, I, I'll say it a little bit more. The population type is influenced by what is shown to me and the corresponding reward. So imagine that you're sitting here, you know, somebody comes here and sees the reward and asks for a reward. You, you know the type, you see the reward. Depending on that sort of, so, some people change their minds. Truly, that's, that's sort of the picturization you can have. Okay, any other questions? So, so when, so in the case where W3 is zero, um, are we making the, uh, the, the, the assumption when I said when W3 is equal to zero is that the arm that was shown to you is not right. Right, right. So because the arm that is shown to you is not right, it is, I mean, because there are only two choices, you like the other one. I mean, so yeah, it's, a, it's a bit of, a, as I said, there are strong assumptions on the model, yeah. but, but yeah, I mean. So essentially, I'm saying that hey, if you don't, if you're not type A, you're type if you're not type A, you're type A. Exactly. Yeah. So Either you're type two diabetic or a type one diabetic, but you are not one diabetic. Sorry, tongue and arm. Okay. But yeah, you get the picture. I mean, you know, either you have to be one, or you have to make a choice. You have to. You have to. It's a binary choice. We're making the choice for you. If you're not one. Then the model is making the choice for you. Yes. Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, I reiterate, it. it's a stylized model, but it's a fun model. To, to understand what's going on. Yeah. Okay, so the constant influence model changes one aspect of it. The total number of poles doesn't keep growing. It just fixes this. So you can see what happens here, right? The, the fraction, as, as more and more balls get added into the earth, the fraction by which the balls, sorry, that any height increases gets smaller and smaller. So that's a decreasing influence part. If you keep the keep the number of balls constant, then the change that you can it, the change that you can induce in the, in the type of the population is larger. Okay? So here I keep the number of balls constant, but here it's a little bit more tricky. Okay, how I update the content of the of the or what happens to the, the balls in the earth is a little different. Okay? So if XT, if, if B, that, that there is a type that there's a type of user is some XT, okay, so assume type one. If instead of being type, if we sort of show an arm one, if the regulation system shows me or the KPS shows me arm two, that's what minus means. And for those of you who are familiar with this, not familiar with this notation, minus here corresponds to the other. Okay? So if type one comes in and I show arm two, okay, and I like it. I was not expecting to like it, I like it. Maybe that was not my preference. I like it. Or Okay, if we show an arm one, sorry, or if we show that kind of arm, and I didn't really like it, okay, I was shown the wrong arm and I liked it, or I was shown the right arm and I didn't like it, that's a WT is equal to zero and one correspondence. Okay, so then, then a ball corresponding to this side flips. Okay, you are shown something you didn't like, so you are probably on the other side. You are shown something that you are supposed to like but didn't like, you are probably on the other side. That's sort of the argument. Yes. So I'm not showing sure this result uh, model. Like, which distribution will the user of type 1 like or not like the, 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 the B? The B idea. So associated with every type, every type and user, sorry, every R and user combination, there is a B. <clears throat> There's a probability of you liking. That is not changing. The only thing that is changing is the population structure, the population ratios. Okay, I mean you can't change too many things. To I mean, I also need to make it analytically tractable and get my theorems. Okay, yeah. Any other any other questions on this? Okay, and you can write a similar one for the other one. Okay, so if this if this only happens, the ball the, the the ball colors won't change. So essentially, again, I repeat that if I'm shown the wrong arm, okay, and I like it, I flip. If I show the right arm, right arm here saying that the one corresponding to me, if I'm shown the right arm and I don't like it, I flip. Reasonable assumptions on the model, arguably. Okay, any other question? So I can write that mathematically. And I reiterate that the B does not change. What is changing is the population's preferences. It's always true that. People who like Mac will buy Mac. But the people who, the number of people who like Mac will not, will keep changing. The number of people who like PCs will keep changing. 
Because that's the model. Yeah. So the BIJ chain is only one, only two, right? I and J are both only two, correct, in this model so far. So I, I, I'll give you generalizations later, yeah. but for now, I just want to pedagogically work with me. I flip. The, the balls and the number of people in the population have no bearing. Ball is just a virtual tracker for me to capture the fraction of population of different balls. Does it have any interpretation about uh, someone influencing someone else? Which part of it? Why is this one model relevant to capture the population? You can, you can, you can make it, you, okay. You can make it more, I mean, you can add probabilities and, and you know, you, for example, I could say I flip with some probability and so on. If I do any of that, I believe there is some, if you add a few more parameters, I can make it closer to the end. Okay, but adding more parameters just messes up the model too much for me to, to get any insight. I, I believe that this is arguably and admittedly a stylized model to gain insights into what can happen. But then you have to assume that the total number in the population, sorry, number of ones in the box is equal to the number of number in the population. That's a little too strong to assume. Again, you know, that, that, that might be a strong correlation that you, you may not. I mean, you can, you can, but you don't have to is the problem. Any other questions? Okay, so the objective here is simple. Okay, as I said it's an influencing bandit. So the objective is to maximize the, the fraction of type 1 users. I just want to concentrate on type 1 at every set. Okay, that's the objective. And the policy, of course, corresponds to choosing a particular sequence of PT and PT. Okay, where PT is the probability with which you show R1. Yeah. So, yeah, I just want to make sure. The probability is to show the right arm to type 1 and the right arm to type. Right arm here corresponds to 80 is equal to 1 and 80 is equal to 2. Okay? So, P is the probability that if, if it's a type 1, what, I, what is the probability that I show it by uh, arm of type 1? And if the arriving user is of type 2, what is the probability that I show type 2 arm for the second? Okay, so that's the I mean, determining this sequence depending on the history is a policy. The fairly standard definition. Okay, and I'm going to look at, mind you, that here the objective is only the local increase. Okay, one step increase. I doing anything more becomes a little more complicated right now in the analysis. So for now, just treat this as a requirement. Okay, so I want to identify here is of course the increase in the in, in the fraction, in the number of balls, expected increase in, this is the expected increase in the number of balls. The number of balls of type 1, given that the, the distribution is this. Okay. Any questions on that? And one step regret is the standard one, where that is, if I have an optimal policy, it will be the increase that I achieve with my policy and the one with optimal policy. And cumulative regret, solve the model. And I'll reiterate that it's a local. Local maximization that I'm seeking. So I'll analyze the decreasing influence bandits and in some detail, and then sort of and then give you the summary results for the constant influence bandits. Okay. Now this is actually quite surprising. The optimal policy for the time slot is you look up B. I'm assuming that B, B is given. So for the time being, assume that B is no. Okay, quickly change to B not being known. Okay, assume that B is known. Then, if this condition is satisfied, okay, then PT is equal to 1. And if this condition is satisfied, then PT is equal to 1. Otherwise, PT and QT are satisfied. Okay, so this is actually quite surprising, at least at first glance. Okay, uh, so if you want to sort of interpret this in words, so you're looking at B11, the probability that I like my type, and I'm comparing with 1 minus B. The probability that I quote unquote dislike the other one. Okay, so I'm going to recommend one, my type to me, or the S is going to recommend my type to me, if 
I like my arm more than I dislike the other arm. Okay, this is the condition. Okay? So that's, it's not too hard to show this. I'll skip the proof. So the optimal policy for type 1 is to recommend A1 if they like A1 more than they dislike A2. And you can write a similar one for. So it's a fixed policy which doesn't change with time. And you choose P1, 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 Q, P, sorry, PQ depending on the Bs. Okay? So PQ is the PQ is not equal to 1. No, we do not need, need not be equal to 1. If it's equal to 1, then you know it's a different kind of a system. Or rather, yeah, B2 is equal to 1 is I always like only that R. Yeah, I don't necessarily make it equal to 1. I mean, you're, you're a Mac lover, but you might be okay looking at a PC. I mean, you don't hate PCs or Mac is not guaranteed. You're not likely to like Mac is the wrong example, but but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. I don't have to like it every time I'm showing that. I'm allowing it in the model. I mean, what you do is, yeah, the other questions. So essentially, what this tells you is that S may recommend arms which are not preferred by the user. This is a wrong numerical example. I just realized it later, so I'll skip that. Okay, you can easily come up with values for B11, B2. Yes, yeah. okay. Any questions on this? So the policy is, is to choose arms like this to, to maximize, maximize the fraction of Z1 population. Okay. So I'll show the whole thing. So if I choose by the policy as PQ, okay, then the expected proportional type 1 users at time t, I can show that you know, if I write D1 and D2 like this, you know, don't write too much about the, the messy math there. Okay, so, so essentially, if I have some formula for D1 and D2, P is coming from you know from, from the conditions that I gave earlier. P and Q are coming from that. And I can get my D1 and D2 from that condition. Again, it depends on D1 and B, the, the B matrix, of course. So asymptotically, what we'll see is that the population, if I use PQ, the population fraction will converge towards this. Z1 will converge towards that. But D1 and D2 are given by. Okay, so you cannot push everybody to one side. Okay, or to, to one, you will have some, some ratio of this. Okay, you can have some ratio. Okay, which is not necessarily one or zero. Okay. Any questions on this? Okay. So these are, you know, once you write down the equation, these are rather straightforward. So it's not the algebra is not very hard. Okay. okay. So we'll say that you know, if I choose TQ like that, it will also maximize asymptotically maximize the proportion of, of users and it will become See, my, what I said was the expected value was d2 by d2 by d1 plus d2. So I'll show that it actually give me d2. I mean, in the limit, it's exactly. Okay, and you can show that eventually the, I mean, essentially the, the idea here is to write down the evolution of z1 and sort of get it into this form and argue that it lacks a particular differential equation and 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 it will in the limit increase. So all sample, sample paths followed by Z1 of P. Z1 of P converge asymptotically almost surely to Z1 equals as a fraction of type 1 users that will be there if you use PQ as I said. Okay. Okay. So this is just some numerical examples. So we have the OD here in blue. Okay. Uh, and then you have, if you have one simulation, you can see that there's some amount of some amount of uh, noise around around that, but the moment you start averaging over 10 or 100 simulations, it's okay. <clears throat> okay. So now let's assume now that the, that B is not known. Okay. So the standard algorithm that we taught that we are taught by the bandits is do this explore and commit. Okay, so you explore for a certain amount of time, let's say n time to x. And then you commit to that for the remaining t minus n. Okay. Now the problem here is that it is remember that the population in the in the in the decreasing influence model, if you are taking up the early time to estimate, 
the population is also you know amenable to significant amount of variations. So you have the double whammy of 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 of, of the of exploration that you have to do and the population being very not very plus it's like very plus they are moving around quite rapidly so your ability to track it may not be that soon okay but and you cannot and we're not able to give you a general picture but if you take a special case then the diagonal elements both the both this diagonal the left diagonal and the right diagonal both of them are equal it's mean, not exactly equal but the right diagonal elements are the same and the left diagonal elements are the same if you take that case, then we can actually show that the regret, as I defined earlier, is that it has some, there is a lot of regret using this model. Okay, I do this estimate, but mind you that it depends on, yeah, so the M depends on P and so on. Okay, so we don't really have a strong relationship to determine M and so on. So we just, if you give me an M, I'll tell you what to do. Okay. <clears throat> So it is inherently inefficient because you know exploitation is during the most plastic phase. Okay. <clears throat> we don't know how to obtain it. Okay. So this is an open question in any of your interests. So what it turns out that I can actually do something simpler. I'll show you this algorithm. This is your standard something comp like algorithm. Okay, where you initialize two quantities of the beta distribution alpha j alpha j is equal to one, beta j is equal to one. You sample from this distribution, okay? Yeah, I think I so overdid the offer all and all that, but you get what I'm trying to do here. So when you sample it, you obtain R is equal to one, then you show R1 with some probability, your this probability comes from over T before, and if, the, if it's the other way, you show um sorry. Yeah, if this is equal to zero, you show um one with the other probability that I that I had earlier, otherwise you show. But I is, remember I is the type of the user. If it's a type 1 user, then you do this. If it's type 2 user, then you do this. Okay, so J is the arm show. I is the type of the user. And RT, I still call it WT, sorry. Okay, WT is the reward that you get. And you update your alpha and, I, alpha and beta exactly like you would do. Turns out that from this also you can show a nice regret from some other thing. Where F1 and F2 are some two constants of time. But we don't need to be something like that. What is interesting is if I compare this with the optimal policy, I compare the EDC policy. Uh, sorry, this is the EDC policy, and this is the public campaign policy. You can see that this one has significant industry, right? And it converges much faster than, than the EDC. <clears throat> and the regret also sort of. I mean, this doesn't seem to have logarithmic structure, but we did check for really logarithmic shows of it. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, so there are several set examples I've run through the I, I promised to finish at 515, so I've run through these pictures and you can see they're all pretty on target. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So now I'll get to that constant influence that. So do you expect it to be harder, difficult? Okay, because it's constant, things don't change. And you have to keep track of too many things, looks like. Okay. okay. Just to remind you again, the way in which the balls split here, balls split rather than a ball gets added. Okay. So the flipping algorithm is as, as I say here. So ball of color light flip, sorry, ball of color light flips. If a type I customer is being recommended, yeah, it's, it's just too long. I don't want to keep repeating that. Okay. So you know what I'm doing. Okay. So if that happens, you know that the you know the, the, the yeah, so the, the, this is the flipping model. Okay. Now it turns out that the P and the Q, if I put that here, are exactly like the Okay. What is interesting is no analysis, all the analysis seems to be very similar. The asymptotic fractions also have a similar structure, except that it is not the, the minus, uh, this quantity was somewhere here. Okay, so we have it here. So it, it just converts it much faster. Okay, to the, to the asymptotic population. <coughs> so with the fixed period, the asymptotic fraction is the same. Okay, uh, yeah. And again, remember that I could not get a general result. 
So I took it for a special case with the B11 equals B22 and B12 equals B21. But a special case, the same result for it. Okay, that was sort of surprising. Okay. So rather surprising because the twofold trade off of the decreasing influence model does not seem to have caused additional damage compared to the constant influence model. Okay. So here is an example if you compare the uh, how, what happens if you use the optimal policy for, uh, sorry, if you use the, uh, yeah, if you use the optimal policy for the two types, the two types of, of models, okay? So this is the, this is the decreasing influence model, this is the uh, constant influence model. You can see that this quickly ramps up and ramps up to the asymptotic fractions of the population. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so the biggest thing was just for the fraction, right? So Which one? This one? Last point. Oh, yeah, yeah. This one, I did not state the theorems, but the same theorem that I had before. Even the regret doesn't show any paper. No. No. Okay. All the results go through identically. Okay. Any other questions? I think there's one more. Yeah. One more figure. Yeah. Again, if you know B, this one, you can see that it runs. So you can actually generalize quite a bit. Okay. Except that what exactly constitutes generalization can be debated. Okay. So in, in one case, what we did was we took the n arms and n, and n type, n arms and n types of users. Okay, this is not as restricted as it might seem. And then we say the diagonal elements are the maximum. Other than that, we don't put any any other restrictions. Okay. Um, and the evolution also you need to define it a little more carefully. We took some simple definitions to say if I'm shown the right arm. Uh, and, and I like it, I add, add one. If I don't like it, I add anybody else, any other any other colors with uniform problem. We can make it more, more complicated, but again, you, know, you get too many parameters and you can't be too much. Okay, so you can actually do that and some simple, simple similar analysis can also be. Okay, again, I don't, I'm not going to go into the details. What is more interesting is that you can take this system and have two competing recommendations. Okay, one of them wants to influence you to go to Z1 or maximize Z1, the other one wants to maximize Z2. You could have those two. Now, here, the, the, what you have to describe in the system becomes more complicated. Okay, whether you want to watch video on YouTube or sorry, movies on Netflix or Amazon. Okay, you can, you can go to both. You can have preferences. Different types of population can have different preferences for different points. So, the, the amount of description that you have to give to the model just keeps increasing. You can do that. Okay, and you can, you can write nice, uh, you know, you can, you can describe nice games out of it. And again, you can get some very interesting results. Okay, again, I'm not going to go into that. So here, as, yeah, just to repeat, the users also have a choice of the recommendation system that they choose, and one needs to define such a preference matrix that we call it. Okay, uh, and equilibrium, of course, depends on X and on a whole lot of things. I mean, again, I don't want to repeat all. You can, I, one can do these simulations and see some very, very interesting behavior. Okay. So just to conclude, what was that? Okay, so why did I, I mean, when did I begin all this? I mean, this looks like something that I pulled out of my no, it was not that bad. Okay, uh, so I put out of an urn, it was not that bad. So the way, the, the motivation for much of this is that I believe that algorithms that learn population preferences also influence the preferences. Okay, this is my sort of my premise in, in developing these models. This could this influence could be transient or permanent. Okay, so transient in you sort of start liking it for a while, after that, it, that liking potentially decays. You can construct models. People who are familiar with opinion dynamics will see such models in in, in the example that I showed you, it was not a benign. I mean, the objective was to influence, but in practice, it could be benign. Okay, there's it, it could be just that, just that I, you know, that just just that the recommender is doing something to 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 explain or, or to show something to to the user. The user is getting influenced, but that influence, the, the how that influence is manifesting is not being captured by the by the recommendation systems algorithm. That is possible. Yeah, you are stretching, or you want a question? Okay, stretching. <laughs> okay. So the effect of this influence is not captured well in the models of high If not, if there is a model that does capture it, please let me know. Okay. So in other words, I mean, this more, this comes from some other pieces of work that I've done. Okay. One is where I capture the user has a state of mind. 
Okay. Uh, our state of mind, with, there's only one user in that model. That state of mind is with respect to each R. Okay, that is how much will I like this R before I'm given. So if you want to talk in terms of the probability, the P I the P on that R keeps changing with time. So I model that as a Markov chain. Okay, how that Markov chain gets influenced, etc. You know, the whole bunch of um, some, some modeling descriptions associated with that. So based on such a intuition, you can come up with a restless bandwidth model. And for that restless bandwidth model, we could determine the middle index based policies where the parameters are known. So this is the work that I did with Rahul Bestrom, one of my PhD students, and Aditya. Okay. I can also consider a deterministic model. So the the, the the state of mind could be, you know, it, it evolves according to a deterministic some kind of a graph on something. Okay, so it, 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 or, or some kind of a cycle. You can you can come up with some 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 description like that, and again you can come up with policies for success where where the state of mind of the user with respect to a particular object or a particular item that is being recommended is changing with time. Okay, or it depends on the history basically. So what is the holy grail? Where am I headed? So what I want to do is to have a general model to describe the interaction between the learning algorithm and the state of mind of the population. What exactly is the state of mind that we need to capture? Okay, that's not the holy grail. I'm not even on the road to it. Okay, this is a couple of couple of whatever wayside ins, if you will, uh, on the way. Okay, yeah. So, so so this is something that I'm looking for. Okay. Anybody interested? Meet me later. Otherwise, thank you very much. Okay. No, no, no. I, I had promised 515. I was I was threatened. <laughs> no, I'm yeah, if there are any questions, I'll take them. Okay. I did not realize I could do perfect transmission. I think it's right. more like the end of the day. <laughs> come on, allow me a little bit of gloating, you know, come on. No, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'm just kidding. What, what Thank I, you. I could tell you, though, is that if you crack that, you, you have a unicorn on your hands. Every people <laughs> want that. You know, we're all after wanting to shape, uh, you know, our demand, uh, especially in the economic scene, <laughs> right? Uh, for instance, we are very interested in demand shaping, what we call it, you know. How do you shape what the user buys? Uh, rather than just predicting based on history. That's what, I call, that's what I call not benign. <laughs> just to be... <laughs> None of the businesses are going to be <laughs> benign about it. And that's why I said, if you crack the holy grail, you have a unicorn on your hand. <laughs> so thank you so much for a great talk. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Let me thank the uh, uh, and all the Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I like to give them. I apologize for not.